quick. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you are new to this page, this is We Crochet. I'm Sarah, I'm the brand director, and I am super excited today to be here with Melissa from Woods and Wall. Hi, Melissa, how are you? I am so good, and I have to tell you just in advance, my neighbors just started doing some construction on their house, so if there's some weird noises, just a heads up. We have that just on, just for this Facebook Live, so special treat. <laughs> But that's real life, I right? know that's always what happens as soon as you go live something happens um, my dog might bark from time to time too so um, <laughs> he gets a little excited about things like that but um so today is coffee and crochet we've been doing this every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m so while we're waiting for people to join Melissa do you have a warm beverage that you're drinking this morning I do. I am always drinking tea like all day, every day. So this is my tea for this morning. It's like a Rubio's tea if you've ever heard of it, but I always have a mug of tea nearby. <laughs> uh, what kind of tea are you drinking? Oh, right. You said, sorry. I, I can know, never I pronounce it. So hope... Oh yeah. I can't either. I'm also drinking tea. So cheers to Yay. you. <laughs> Um, all right, so today we're going to chat with you a little bit. Um, as I said, if you're just joining us, I'm Sarah. I'm with We Crochet. You can find us on crochet.com. Hop on there. You can get our emails, sign up for our emails on crochet.com. Um, also, if you're just joining us, be sure to like and share so that we can get as many viewers as possible. Uh, Melissa, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and your crochet background? I would love to. So like a lot of people, I started crocheting when my grandma taught me as a kid and probably for a solid decade, I only made dishcloths or like very basic square items. So if it was square, I could make it. But other than that, I wasn't interested in venturing out too far out of my comfort zone. So it was probably about um, three or four years ago, I started to kind of get a little bit more creative venture out, make some different things, and eventually started an Instagram. This was December, 2016, so a few years back. And it didn't take me long to realize that I wanted to design. So I started doing different crochet designs and about six months later published my very first pattern, which I never set out to be a crochet designer. I just realized that I could never find patterns for things that I wanted and that I could make anything I wanted to, because as you know, crochet is pretty flexible. You can kind of make different shapes, you can make sizes, you can make different stitches. So that's kind of how I set out from just being a crocheter that made dishcloths all the time to designing my own garments and accessories and anything I wanted. That's awesome. I think it's so interesting that you got started with dishcloths. It's such a great way to learn new stitches and experiment with new stitches yeah. too. It's kind of a small project. Um, so do you have any advice for other crocheters out there? We get a lot of questions from people who are wanting to start designing their own patterns. What advice do you have for people who are getting started? My biggest advice, um, and I don't mean this, I don't want to be cheating here, but truly it's just to do it. I think truly anyone can design crochet. All you have to do is be able to write down what you're doing. And that's the first step. If you can write down what you're doing and repeat it yourself, you've already kind of designed a pattern. So from there, you have a little bit of homework to do. You know, you have to look at the Craft Yarn Council standards or, um, Getting a tech editor is a great idea because they can also help make sure that you're writing it correctly. But if you can make something just from an idea and then write it down, you basically already designed the pattern. So my biggest advice is just to go for it because anyone can do it. That's such great advice. I really love the tip about consulting the Craft Yarn Council. They do have some standards that are so helpful, especially if you're trying to design garments. They've got a lot yeah. of sizing standards that are super helpful. Um, and you mentioned working with tech editors also. How, how do you track down a tech editor? What's that process like? I, you know, that's one of my biggest, not regrets, but something I wish that I had done a lot sooner. So mm -hmm. I realized that I wanted a tech editor. Actually, when I designed what I'm wearing now, which is my Pebble Cardi, which we can talk about later. Yes, but I can't wait. 
when I set out to make a cardigan pattern, I realized that this was going to be a lot different from just an accessory or a cowl or something that's pretty simple. So I knew not only was I gonna have my pattern tested by test crocheters, but I wanted to make sure that it was as perfect as it could be. And I didn't want it to just be like, oh, well, that's her first garment pattern. I wanted it to be professional. So um, I went into this Facebook group. I think I was just looking for Facebook groups and there's a couple groups out there full of tech editors. So in these tech editor groups, they share best practices on how to become a tech editor. They ask each other questions about tech editing and they're also totally welcome for anyone to come in and say, hey, I'm looking for a tech editor for crochet. Can anyone out there help me? And people will jump to help you. And then from there, um, I just pick someone who I felt like their expertise and their personality went really good with mine. And we've worked together ever since. So it has been one of the best investments I ever made, but all you have to do is either ask on your Instagram, look in a Facebook group and the tech editors are out there and they want to help you. That's awesome. We work a lot with tech editors and test crocheters here at We Crochet too. And they're such an essential part of what we do. And they're so knowledgeable. And we do really get to be good friends with them because there is so much communication back and forth. Uh, we have a couple Facebook questions that have come up, Melissa. So I'm going to read them out for you. Uh, Nicole Chase says, hi, ladies. I'm having hot chocolate this morning. I don't like coffee or tea, which uh, awesome. I also like hot chocolate. I might have to switch to that later. Um, Kelsey Willis says she is a coffee addict. Um, and then she also asked Melissa, what do you think is the best way to go about getting pattern testers? That's a excellent question. So I think again, it kind of depends if I happen to have a social media account for my crocheting at the time when I was looking for testers. So there's that option where you can just post an Instagram story and say, hey, I'm looking for testers for this project. But if you don't have much of a following or if you don't have a dedicated knitter crochet account, same thing, you can just look for testers on Facebook and there's Facebook groups of people who test patterns and enjoy testing patterns. Um, one thing I should also mention is a couple years ago when I did my very first pattern and looked for testers, I found this great group of girls and I still work with them to this day, not on every project, but we're still all really good friends and we talk all the time. So I think once you have those people in your corner that you're friends with, they're more willing to be honest with you and give you feedback and know that you're not going to take it personally. They're like, hey, listen, mm -hmm. row three made zero sense. I'm going to be like, okay, <laughs> tell me more about that because I thought it made perfect sense. So once you find those people, hang on to the good ones and make sure that you treat them really nicely and um, just treat them like more than just your, your testers because they can become some of your best friends too. Absolutely. They're so valuable and so essential. Uh, it's great to have super knowledgeable people in your corner helping you out. So Melissa, you mentioned the cardigan that you're wearing. So I would love to see some of the projects that you've been working on. And we've got a list outlined here. Um, let's go through the list. I can't wait to see them and have a little show and tell. Um, as we go through this, we're going to link to uh, Melissa's pattern in the comments. So you can be sure to get a hold of that pattern and try it out. If it's a pattern you really like, we're also going to link to the yarn in the comments. So be sure to be following along in the, in the comment section of the live video. Um, so first up on our list, Melissa, we have the Ripley cowl. Can we see that pattern? What does that look like? Yes. So um, this is the Ripley cowl. It uses the bulky wool or wool bulky from the Upcycle Reserve collection. And when you guys launched this Upcycle Reserve collection, it just spoke to me because one, I love natural fibers. And two, I love when things are eco-friendly and very like intentionally made. So the fact that this yarn was made from leftover other fibers just spoke to me. So I knew I had to make something with it and I'll show you kind of up close, but this is, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a ribbing that's used with slip stitches. So I did a whole video tutorial on this too, which you'll see on the Ravelry page, but um, it's just a really fun texture that I like when things, you have to look at it and say, is that mm -hmm. crochet? So that was mm -hmm. my goal with this one. And it's just a thick, chunky wool cowl that I love wearing in like the middle of winter. 
I love that call, Melissa. I can't wait to make a version of that for myself. And the texture on that, I'm so glad you were able to hold it up close to the screen because it just, it looks so, so, so good. Um, one other thing I would add about that yarn, you're totally right. It's made from upcycled fibers, but because it's made from upcycled fibers, it's also um, only available for a limited time. So like that color, do you remember the name of that color? I don't recall it off the top of my head. I don't know why, um, the but color I want to say used. like armadillo or something. Yeah, we'll be sure to get a link to it yeah. in the comments. Um, but so we only have limited amounts of that color because it's made from leftovers. So if you like that color, be sure to grab it because it, it won't come back again. It's kind of a, a one time only thing. So um, yes, thank you so much for sharing that project. It's one of my favorites. Uh, what is next on the list of projects? I think Rebel Cow. Yes. So the next one I have, um, this one I was kind of inspired by, if you've ever seen the Hudson's Bay stripes or like the revival stripe, you'll see on like heirloom blankets. So I've always loved those colors and I thought it'd be really cool to do a dark version. Um, so that's what Ooh. inspired the towel. Also, as a female that wears makeup, I don't like to put things over my face that are gonna get dirty. So I made it with a charcoal um, twill yarn kind of as the main color. And then I alternated the different twill colors that kind of mimic that Revival Stripe or Hudson's Bay Stripe. So it's honestly, if you are a beginner crocheter, this, as nice as this looks, all it is is single crochet. It's just single crochet. So it's so easy. It's so simple. You can use whatever colors you want. And I also really like it because it's kind of, it's just very gender neutral. So I will wear this, my, hus my husband, I almost said my Hudson, but Hudson's Bay, just a lot of things on the mind. <laughs> but I just like that it's so simple to make and it's so easy to make in whatever colors you want. So it's kind of about like being a rebel and mixing it up and however you want to visualize your stripes or your colors, whatever inspires you, you can totally do that. Awesome. I love the colors there. And that twill yarn is just some of my favorite. So I'm so glad that you've got such a good project there. And we've also been talking a lot lately about um, crochet as like being a very calming thing to help with your mental health, especially right now as there's like a lot yeah. weighing on our mind and having a project that's just simple single crochet, but has such a striking look with those stripes. Um, is I think a pretty popular thing to tackle right now. It's just calming, meditative, yeah. also great for learning if you're new to crochet and you want to take it on. Ah, oh, awesome project. Yeah, it's, it's one of my faves for sure. <laughs> yeah. What's next on the list as far as cool projects you've got going on there? Yeah, so the next one I have, um, I called it the better than basic beanie because the rebel cowl I just showed you is so basic. It's single crochet stitches. It's super simple, but this one I called better than basic because that's how I felt about it. So it's really simple. Um, I use a herringbone half double crochet. So it looks really like a fun, cool texture on the body of the hat. And then down here, um, I did a whole tutorial for this, but you'll find, I love making things that have a tendency to look almost knit. So this ribbing is crochet, but it uses slip stitches. And again, this one I did a whole video tutorial for because it's a little bit tricky if you've never done it before. I promise though, once you get it, it's super easy. But um, so it uses this really cool slip stitch ribbing and then half double crochet for the body of it. And this one uses big O yarn, which is just like the softest, squishiest kind of bulky yarn. But the hat is really cute because it's slightly slouchy. And even though it's a bulky yarn, it's not like stiff or awkward. Like it's very just slouchy and cozy to wear. So, and of course I had to add a palm on there because I just love faux fur palms too. I love faux fur palms also. Sorry, I had a little tech issue with my phone. Um, I actually, Melissa, that project has been on my list for a long time. I saw you release it a few months back and I've got that yarn in my stash behind me and I can't wait to get it started. Um, what projects do you have next? I think you've got a couple of cool dishcloths to share. Yes, yes. I just have a whole stack here. We can just keep going for hours. I'll just keep showing all these. It's so much fun. So I mentioned before, my grandma taught me how to crochet when I was a kid. And the first thing I made for like a long time was dishcloths. So my mom at the time, um, 
she's come around now, but at the time my grandma would make knit dishcloths and I would make single crochet dishcloths. And my mom always said that the crochet ones were a little too thick and stiff and that they didn't dry as nicely as the knit ones. So of course I had to set out to make a crochet dishcloth that was even better than any knit one my grandma had ever made because I'm competitive like that, I guess. But I came up with what I called my favorite dishcloth. So I've probably made hundreds of dishcloths over the years, but this one is my favorite because it uses what it's called the moss stitch or the seed stitch or the linen, st linen stitch or the granite stitch. It has all these different names, but all it is is single crochet with alternating chain stitches. And it creates the nicest texture that's still solid, but it has a little bit more um, breathability to it, I guess I'll say. So I use Dishy Twist for this and I love Dishy just in general because it's the perfect like workhorse cotton yarn for things in your kitchen. These are dishcloths that I actually use all the time. Um, they've been washed, they've been dried, they've scrubbed things and look how good they look. Like they're so cute and so fun. So this is my favorite dishcloth and I named it that because it's my absolute favorite ever. It's the perfect size, texture, yarn, everything. Oh, it's so really, that's I love Dishy Twist. It's one of my favorites. It just, it looks so good when it's worked up. Um, and then the next Dishy, I think you also use Dishy for your next washcloth. Yes. And that's your newest pattern release. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So um, I have both of them here. This I started because I realized that when you guys started making Dishy on a cone, and you got all that extra yardage. I was like, well, wow, this really opens up a lot of doors. What can I make that's bigger with dishy? So I decided to make um, a dish towel, which I called the dishy towel because there's a lot of different names for dish towels, but um, whether you call it a kitchen towel or a tea towel or whatever, but this is the dishy towel. So it's in two different sizes. Um, this pink one here is what's more of a standard size dish towel. So it's pretty big, but it's meant to be folded in thirds. And then, you know, you can hang it over if you have like um, a handle on your stove or a handle on your fridge or something like that. And then I also realized that this uses the waffle stitch, which is a really pretty texture, but it's also like pretty thick and hefty. So I decided to make a smaller version of it as well. So this little guy is the same towel, but just a little bit smaller uses that waffle stitch and it's just perfect for like wiping off your hands real quick or I'll lay it down if I'm taking something out of the oven and just like set a baking sheet on it or whatever and it works as like a pot holder or hot pad too. So I'm a big fan of Dishy. I, I have so much of it, um, but it's so good for so many things and it washes and wears so nicely. That's awesome. Yeah, I think we're all pretty big fans of Dishy too and I just love that stitch pattern. So I can't wait to get um, get your pattern and learn more about how you accomplish that kind of waffly stitch that's perfect for a dish towel and looks so good with that yarn. Um, and so I think we want to skip ahead to your next pattern because we actually have a comment from Debbie Smith um, in the Facebook feed. She says, hi from Aberdeen, Scotland. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining us from Scotland. That's awesome. And she is looking forward to hearing more about the pebble cardigan. So and I definitely yeah. am too, because it looks gorgeous. Tell us all about the pebble cardigan. Yes. So um, the pebble cardi is what I'm wearing right now. This is the first garment that I ever made. So if you're intimidated by crochet garments, this is a great one to start with. It's made um, just in different panels that then are seamed together. And I'll show you up close. Um, the texture on it. So it uses the herringbone half double crochet, which I also used in the Better Than Basic Beanie. So you know, it's one of my favorites. Um, but I used Comfy Color Mist, which when this yarn came out, I remember it was a few years ago now, I think I saw it and I was like, I need to make that in a cardigan. So that's where I was finally inspired and found the perfect yarn to make my first garment. So the acrylic cotton blend is just perfect for wearing in the summer or the springtime, but you can also wear it in the winter too, but I wear mine year round and I've worn this one regularly for, since I made it a couple of years ago and it still looks great. But when you guys released more colors, I think last fall, um, I was like, oh no, now I have to make another one. So I actually made two of them because I also wanted to make it, this is the color notebook. 
So it's just such a fun, modern cardigan. I actually wear this to work to my day job all the time. And it's just really fun to dress up and dress down. But today I have it on with leggings. You can wear it with black pants. Um, and it's just like a very, I don't know if you can tell of me sitting here, but it's very um, flattering and a little bit more on the form fitting side. So the arms are really slimming. The body isn't super oversized. So it's just something again, that you can easily dress up. Um, if you want an oversized sweater pattern, you can make it in a size up if you want, but I really like that. This is something that I can just wear, you know, to dress up and not just around the house and have people look at it and be like, you made that? And I'm like, yes, I did. So that's the Pebble Cardi. I love it. And it's such a good feeling when someone gives you a compliment on something that you've made yes. and you can say that you've made it. I also love Comfy Color Mist a ton, but I haven't actually made a project in it yet. So I think this might have to be my first project. I might actually, I'm actually making a mental note. I might start that this weekend. It's really, really Yay. cute. I love that project so much. So um, I'm going to take a quick pause now. If you're just joining us, um, my name is Sarah. I'm the brand director for We Crochet. You can find us on crochet.com. And we're really lucky to be joined today with Melissa um, from Woods and Wool, who is a fantastic crochet pattern designer. And uh, we've got some people joining us. So again, if you're if you're here, please like, share, comment. Um, we've got Diana Enns, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Diana, um, from Apache Junction, Arizona. And she is also a coffee addict and she is also a pattern tester. So awesome to have a pattern tester in our community watching right now. So the next thing I wanna to transition to, Melissa, you've been doing a lot of posts about this on your Instagram and I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of questions about this in the feed. So if we don't get to your question, if you have a question, we don't get to it in this live stream, we'll touch base with Melissa and we'll get them answered in the comments afterwards. But Melissa, you've been doing some pretty cool dyeing and I know I really wanna learn a ton more about that. So can you tell us what your dyeing process has been and where we can go from you, I think on Instagram to learn more about it, yeah. share all of that. Yes. Yeah, so this all started about a year ago. I always thought it would be really cool to dye something with avocados. I don't remember where, but back a while ago, I'd seen someone else do it and I thought it looked really cool. And I should preface all of this with saying that I have zero yarn dyeing experience, like absolutely zero, but I did a whole bunch of Googling and research and read about it. And I learned that you can dye yarn with avocados. So a year ago, I have a whole blog post on this and exactly how I did it, if anyone wants to see. But a year ago, I dyed my first yarn with avocados. So these are a couple of those skeins. This one uses Felici, which is from Knit Picks and Wheat Crochet. And it is originally um, the bare colorway. So it's just the plain natural colored yarn. This one is Stroll. So I dyed them with different amounts of avocados. But basically what you do is you take your avocado, the pit part and the peel, so after you've eaten it, you just kind of wash off the pit and the peel really well. You get a big pot and you just simmer those on the stove. So for this one, I used three pits and three peels. I simmered them for like three-ish hours, like two and a half, three hours. And then I let it sit overnight. Then the next day, all you have to do is soak your yarn in cold water, get that kind of dye back up to simmering. And then you just kind of plop your yarn in there and just kind of let it soak in all the avocado dye. And then I think I left this one in for like 20 minutes and then pull it out, let it cool, rinse it. And this is the color that you get from avocados. It's, it's so amazing and it's so easy because I'll show you um, a shawl that I made for my avocado yarn about a year ago. So this is my Amble shawl pattern, but I'll show you the avocado yarns in it. So this one is from avocados. And then if I get down to this one right here, this light pink is from avocados. And then I used um, the white yarn is from a hand dyer. So I just kind of mix that in there, but you can make different shades of pink. And then if you've ever wanted to make a project with fingering weight yarn, it's just such an easy way to get beautiful colors. But each of these yarns is like half the price of what you might get from an indie dyer, which it's amazing to support those dyers, but if it's something that you just want to do a, a budget project and kind of dye your own, it's such a fun and easy way to get these like gorgeous pink colors. So 
I'm obsessed with it. I want to dye everything. I own this color. I'm a very neutral loving person, but this, um, these pink tones are just, they're perfect. Like you can wear this, you can do anything with it. So I'm kind of obsessed. Yeah, I think I might be too. I love those pink colors. I'm not normally a pink person, but that shade of pink is just kind of like the perfect yeah. shade of pink. So I can't wait to try it. Um, and you mentioned this previously. I think you said that those were our bear yarns. So mm -hmm. um, if you hop over to crochet.com, check out our bear yarn collection. All of our bear yarns are essentially um, like a dye free beach bleach free base of all of the yarns that we sell anyways. And they're, they're really intended specifically for dyeing. So they've kind of got some pre-treating there and they're, they're just ready to be dyed and played with. And um, I'm glad that they worked out so well with avocado dyeing. Have you had any, how did you perfect that process? I've talked to some people before that have tried avocado dyeing and it ended up kind of like a brown color that wasn't so appealing. Did, did yours yeah. just work kind of with your first try or? So um, from what I understand, because again, not a whole expert here, but from my experience, um, every single one is going to be a little bit different based on where you get your avocados or where they're sourced from. It can also um, change color based on your water. So someone even told me that they use rainwater for dyeing because they like the color better. I just use our tap water. But if you find that it's turning out a little bit more brownish than you want, which you can see this one here is a little bit more brownish than this one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really mind that, but if you want it to be more pink tone, I've heard what you can do is add baking soda to the water. And then what that does is it kind of changes the pH level and makes it more of a pinky color. So there's little kind of tricks you can do, but as long as you kind of like an earthy-ish pink color, I feel like you can't go wrong. You're just gonna get maybe a darker shade or a more medium shade, but you don't need to add anything extra to your water if you don't want to, unless you wanna do baking soda or something like that. But what happens is um, with other dyeing, you have to add what's called a mordant. So the mordant is what will help the dye stick to the fiber, but with avocados, in those pits that you're simmering, there's something in it called, I believe it's called tannin. And that tannin is a natural mordant that then helps it stick to the yarn. So it's honestly, I feel like mother nature just made the avocado ready to go for us dying and knit picks and we crochet just gave us the yarn to do it with. Because <laughs> again, when I first set out to do this, I'd never done this before. I had no idea where to get the yarn and knit picks and we crochet has like dozens and dozens of different ones to choose from. And I knew I wanted fingering weight, but um, Felici Bear, I think also comes in a worsted weight. Um, and then Stroll, I think there's a few different of that too, but I could be wrong, but it's just so much fun. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It is. Um, I actually have avocados in my kitchen right now and I'm pretty psyched to try it this weekend. So I'm just at the moment, I'm pulling up um, so again, if you have an interest in our bear yarns that, that Melissa used, you can find those on crochet.com. And we also have available on crochet.com this nifty um, yarn guide. I don't know if you all can see that, um, but we have this available on crochet.com and nitpicks.com. It's everything a guide to all the colors, all the yarns we sell. And if you have that available on page 96, we've got this super long list of um, every bear yarn you could try with avocado dyeing. So I'm gonna go through and figure out what I have in my stash to try this weekend. Um, so Melissa, where can people find more info about um, your avocado dyeing? I think you did some Instagram tutorials. Where, where can we track those down? Yeah, so if you're on my Instagram, which is at Woods and Wool, um, I have them all saved to my Instagram story highlights. So you can just click through and see step-by-step -step what I did. But I also outlined it in a blog post on my blog, which is woodsandwool.com. So if you just want to scroll through and see exactly what yarn I used, I outlined for each actual skein I did, um, how many pits and peels I used and how long I simmered those and then how long I left the yarn in the dye because those are what are going to give you a different color from something darker to lighter to the blushy color that I have in here. Um, so if you really want to get it right on the first try, just read exactly what I did. But otherwise, if you dye something and you maybe it's too light, you can always re-dye it and make it darker. So just keep that in mind too. But 
yeah, it's all on my blog and you can also find it on my Instagram at Woods and Wool. Awesome. I can't wait to go follow along and try it out this weekend. Um, so a couple people have been commenting. Debbie Smith says, I have just added the pebble cardigan in comfy color mist to my make list. I'm addicted to making garments for myself and it looks gorgeous. And uh, Debbie, me too. I've also added that to my make list. Um, Nicole Chase says, that's so cool. I think she's talking about your avocado dyeing, which is so cool. I'm so excited to try that. And then Monica Denker Spears says, such a pretty color. Then producer Sarah also messaged me. We've got producer Sarah behind the scenes. She is wondering, how do you wash avocado dyed projects? Is that, do you know a bit how to take care of it once it's dyed? Um, so you can, okay, any yarn that I have that is from a hand dyer or that I have dyed myself with avocados, I hand wash them. So I know that's a little bit tedious, but I know that everyone will understand once you put all the time and effort into making something, you want to make sure that you're not going to undo all your hard work. So as long as you're washing it in cold water, it should be fine because once you're done dyeing it, you'll take the yarn out of the dye pot, let it cool, and then you'll rinse it in cold water. And when you're rinsing it, if you're using a wool yarn, basically the water will run off clear. You're not gonna see a lot of that dye coming out. So I will use a, like a wool wash, um, like eucalyn or like soak wash. And I'll just hand wash something like this um, in cold water. You let it soak for like 15 minutes and you just take it out, gently wring it out and then lay it flat to dry. So I'm extremely gentle with it. I think you could probably get away with, um, you know, a cold, delicate cycle in your washing machine. I don't trust my washing machine. So um, that's how I handle it. But with anything that I've made, I will be perfectly honest and tell you that I wash it the least amount as possible. So even my Pebble Cardi's, I only wash these when I need to, because I'm always wearing another shirt or something underneath and I will always hand wash them the same way. So I'm just overly cautious because I want my handmade stuff to last forever. So they should be fine though, as long as you're using cold water. Awesome, that's such great advice. Um, we'll definitely be sure to take care of our projects. And Melissa, it's about time for us to wrap up. Can you share with us all the other places people can find you if they wanna follow your patterns, your blog, your social, where are all the places we can, we can follow along with you? Um, the best place to find me is Instagram because that's usually where I'm at. That's where I'm hanging out. If you ever have questions or anything, leave a comment or a DM. I'm always there. Um, but I also have YouTube, my blog, um, Pinterest, Facebook, and everything is just woods and wool. So woods and wool just kind of spelled out exactly how it sounds. And I've got a lot of fun um, crochet everything. I don't really knit. So if you like crochet patterns and kind of simple accessories, like I showed some shawls, a few garments mixed in, um, find me on Ravelry or on my blog, and you'll kind of see all those different patterns that you can pick out one that I hope that you like. And the Pebble Cardi is a great one. I'm so happy to hear that some of you guys are adding it to your queue because it's one of my favorite things I've ever made. So I hope you guys enjoy that one. Yay, I can't wait to make that one too. Thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us today. Um, again, this is Coffee and Crochet with We Crochet. We're gonna be back every Tuesday at nine in the morning, nine in the morning Pacific time, um, talking with awesome people like Melissa, really creative people who've got great designs and advice and crochet tips to share with us. Uh, you can find us on crochet.com, sign up for our emails there. We also have a podcast. We have a blog, blog.crochet.com. Um, we're on all the social channels. We've got a Ravelry group, so join in the discussion. Um, I know Melissa's got a lot of people talking about avocado dyeing, but if you want to hop in the We Crochet Ravelry group and talk about avocado dyeing there, we can bring Melissa in to answer some questions. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you, Melissa. Yay, thank you for having me. Bye.